Okay. Let's get this shared out. Dun, dun, dun. And let's make sure I have everything set up that I need. Okay, <clears throat> let me get this uh, going real quick. Turn off my sound here. Dun dun dun! Heidi Honey ever? <laughs> You're the first one in. Yeah, I got some. Uh, uh, let me move my water. Kind of backtracking a little bit here on this build. I meant to get to this a couple nights ago, but uh, you know it's the winter time and the energy level is definitely waning. So by the time I get home and after the gym, uh, sometimes it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so let's see. Let me just get this shared out here to social media here before I forget. And I'm trying to use Microsoft Edge because it takes a whole lot less memory on the second computer. But of course YouTube being a Google service, Chrome really, really likes to pop up consistently and say, please use me. And uh, let's get this over here. And I moved the big monitor off the table. I have it on one of my rolling stands. So hopefully that will give me a little bit more space to work with. Okay, there goes that. Hey, David. I'm glad I have some people jumping in. Jim, what's that? <laughs> oh, I'm, at, uh, I'm at that gym every day. That's my thing. Okay, so let me go ahead and... All right, that's going, that's going. Very good. I have all these computers and they all suffer from the same lagginess with social media stuff. And no matter what I do, Post that one there. That's the other power supply we got to do. I got the uh, heated. And then uh, also uh, over here, I've uh, got my little uh, stand here for uh, all those clips. I figured uh, how perfect, you know? Did that on the, uh, on the Ultimaker a while back. All right, I'm just gonna share this out one more place. So enough of seeing him, you're back to me. And let me make sure Streamlabs OBS is working. Okay, so happy Saturday night. <laughs> Let's start there. Uh, let's see, five viewers. I think I recognize everyone that has uh, said hello already. Uh, I'll start with the basics. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome to my channel. We're nerdy is cool. And I know you guys uh, put up with me saying that repeatedly, but I've had a lot of people that uh, hadn't heard of me before and uh, have joined in. So nice to have you guys. Uh, as you guys may remember, if you have watched the build previously, uh, the printer is definitely taking shape. It's very large. And you may recall that the other night we encountered an issue, or I encountered an issue, where the design of this printer is such that you cut off the end of the AC power cord and you wire it into the power supply and it plugs into the outlet. No switch. Now there is fusing built into the power supply so it's safe to do that, but 
of all the printers I have, they all have a power switch. And I just, I didn't like that. I, I just, I couldn't get my mind around that. So in the last video, um, I think it was Caleb and others had suggested, hey, you know what, you should take a caliper and uh, kind of come up with, you know, a mount because uh, John Folger sent me an improved power supply. Uh, he sent me some Kapton tape so we can get this bed wired up and uh, take care of that next. But uh, he did send me the FT5 switch and I searched high and low for a 250 volt 4 amp um, uh, fuse and uh, those are hard to find. <laughs> I could find three and I could find five. So I was finally able to find a 4 amp fuse and uh, that has now been installed and placed into that switch which I have rigged up here in the back right now. What you guys may have seen, I posted it on social media, I posted it on Instagram, and I also posted it on Facebook, but uh, thanks to Caleb's idea about uh, making a cardboard cutout and kind of getting a rough idea of how I wanted this all to look, uh, we now have, and I kind of got it uh, tentatively hooked up and installed here, and uh, dun, 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 let me get the other camera on there. Somewhere here I have a mouse, and there it is. And the focus is wonky. Here we go. I don't know what it is with this camera, but. So <clears throat> that's, <laughs> uh, what's really cool is my buddy Fred helped me out with this. And as you can see, not only is this level with the top and it's not dragging on the bottom, but uh, we've got this low enough so that uh, we can have the uh, uh, five millimeter uh, screws with their T-nuts uh, holding in the back. Um, the only downside is that kind of ruins the routing of the wires through that channel uh, because you don't want the T-nuts to grab them. But uh, the other thought is I could move this further down. Uh, but again, the fact that we got a prototype going from cardboard to CNC out of aluminum, uh, this is 8th inch 50-52 uh, uh, aluminum, uh, stuff I use for my R2 building, but it came out really well. Now, there's a couple of things that are of interest that when I showed people this, some people had some concerns about, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, how are you going to connect the connector uh, as far as the wiring going from this to the power supply? The, <clears throat> what's interesting is there's, there's been some interesting points made that they're worried that I'm running these three AC wires over a long distance. But as we know from having the printer uh, out and, a, and about, um, we're not dealing with a huge amount of distance between where the wires are on the back of the switch and to where they're going into the power supply. I mean, we're literally talking maybe three or four inches. Uh, let me pop that back down so you guys can see. So there's the back of the power supply and here's where the, the switch is. Why was the... Why is the focus being so awful tonight? There we go. So, and I, you know, I'm not the biggest guy about soldering wires on AC because I don't do a lot of stuff with AC, so I, I really don't know. Uh, what I was going to do is I was going to use, as I did with the FT5, I was going to use the uh, crimp on, uh, just like what's being used right here, you know, the crimp on uh, spade connectors, uh, you know, to connect them to the appropriate spots here. And then of course, you know, they go to the power supply and are, you know, uh, you know, are screwed down. So I don't see anything that should really prevent that from, from working. <laughs> uh, well, you mentioned heat shrink tubing and I don't have any. And all I'm doing is, I mean, I'm looking at, uh, you know, what's already on here and I, I don't see, you know, I don't see where there's gonna be any, any real issues here. Uh, when I look at this guy, let me, uh, back to the cannon view here yeah I mean these they do have some nice shrink tubing going from the uh, uh, spade connector on up and I'm pretty sure I have something that would probably fit that because the, the gist of it being obviously you don't want to have any you know bare wires you don't want to reach back there and have a very unpleasant uh, surprise so but with that having been made and again, I don't know why the focus is being so wonky, but uh, so I decided to have a little fun with it because obviously I enjoy the color orange because I'm a BB-8 builder. So uh, there we go. So I made one out of orange. <laughs> so now as far as heat shrink tubing that will go over those connectors, you guys pose a good question and that might be something else, <laughs> you know, I may have to uh, pick up. So. 
So this, the build is slowly grinding away. What do I have for shrink tubing? I have, I think all the shrink tubing I have is the really, really small stuff like this. And that would not go over one of those connectors. So, <laughs> This might be another one of those short videos where we talk about what's the best way of doing this and then going to the next step. But, but no, like, and like I said, this I'm really kind of proud of. I, I like how well that came out. And the fact that I was able to spray paint anything in the basement and it, and it took less than a day to dry, even better. So, part of the process is gonna be getting that power supply out and replacing it with this new one. And the beautiful thing about living up here in the boonies is trying to find stuff that you guys in bigger cities can get <laughs> can get quite easily. Uh, the other thing I did too is uh, obviously we need these uh, three additional wires to go to our AC. And I went and took the, uh, the power cable and I cut it. And then I uh, used a razor blade to uh, get that plastic uh, uh, cover off of it. And that wasn't a lot of fun, man. I cut my thumb all the hell. I just was trying to go too fast, and uh, all week long, every time I've gone to use my thumb, it's it's in one of those spots where it just anything you do <laughs> sets it off. Uh, I'm glad you said the shrink tubing because I'm looking at these connectors. Because what I intended to use. Well, see, I do have a couple here that are, uh, I'm going to top, top of this all over here again. Let's go back to my uh, small camera. See, these are the ones that I have, and they are pretty well covered up. Just once will you focus. So I felt good about using those versus using you know these types that you know don't have any kind of cover whatsoever. Yeah, so I think tomorrow I might have to make a uh, trip to the local hardware store and find some more of those. So, in one regard, it's kind of a bummer that the printer is designed, you know, that way with, with no power switch. Uh, and, and, and again, you know, not, not, a, not a swipe at uh, folder tech, but um, I just, uh, not crazy about a, uh, you know, a printer not having a power switch. And uh, I know I sound like a broken record when I mention that, but it just seems weird. Can't believe I'm the only person that's mentioned it. So what are you guys doing? Let's see, let me look at the chat here, see if I've missed anything. Nope, you gentlemen are being fairly quiet tonight. So, so my choices are either to find some really good, see, I think these are gonna work. Let me go back to, uh, where's my laptop camera? Maybe my laptop camera's gonna work better. See, these are the, oh yeah, this is way better. See, these are the ones that I have. So I would think that these, whereas they have that, uh, they're, they're entirely covered, should suffice. You know, they're a crimp on connector, you know, just like this guy is, except it's a, it's a bit more transparent. So again, you know, we have, working with AC power is something I've, I've not done. <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, I'm comfortable with 12 volt and 24 volt. But uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, setting up, you know, how this works, I definitely want to make sure I do it right the first time and don't uh, incur any uh, unfortunate surprises that would, uh, you know, zap me or cause any injury. So, I'm just see how well these guys fit. Yeah, see, these all fit really good. So, I'm not, I don't think these Krippon connectors are bad, but I, I do like what you, you did point out that... Uh, you know, if they are fully, if the metal contacts are fully covered, uh, we are preventing 
uh, any issues from occurring. So, so there it is. Now, since we're not going to do anything with these, because I only have two and I need three, so I will pick up more of those tomorrow. So we will definitely be getting back to that at some point tomorrow. And so what I'll do is let me move these guys. I think that arm is going to look really, really slick. <laughs> yeah, that's just it, Dave. I, you know, you just if you're going to do it, you want to do it right. And as awkward as it is to get in here and rewire everything, well, you know, let's let's do it right. You know, what's what's the hurry? It's taken us a week and a half to do this, so let's just do it right. All right, so let's get some stuff out of the way. We'll have the G Tech hold all this stuff. It'll be the first productive thing that a GTEC printer has done. Sorry, I did say that out loud. Now, just so you guys are aware, I, oops, I knocked that over already. Uh, I do have a, a helper this evening. Let me get the uh, camera out over here. Um, she has been <laughs> following me around all day long today. She's just having one of those days where I'm her favorite person. Look at that. I stocked up on filament recently. <laughs> so I've been trying to keep her off the, uh, the computer desk and uh, it hasn't always worked very well. You know how cats are. They get a mind of their own. All right, so let's clean this up real quick. What I'd like to do is I want to get back to the step that we skipped many, many, many moons ago. And that was the bed. Let's move the power supply so we don't lose it. Actually, we're going to install the new power supply too. That's easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. So let's look back at the instructions here. And dun, dun, dun. All right. So let me plus that a little bit for my. So right here, let's get this on the table. Uh, somewhere here I get some snips that will cut that captain tape. So let's just kind of review the instructions. So secure the bed thermosist to the center of the bottom of the bed with the included captain tape. Then solder the black wires down to the heater pads and they came pre-soldered so that is very awesome. I was hoping before the weekend is out to have this thing doing a test print. How cool would that be, right? And let's see if I can get the camera number two to play nice. Wow. Even in focus. How about that? So these wires are pretty coiled up and don't really want to play nice while moving, so let's stretch you over there. Actually, that giant power supply, you're going to come in handy real quick. There you go. And we definitely want to have this come up from the center. And we want this feller. There we go. My other computer that I'm using to monitor keeps on going to sleep. That's helpful. All right, so we want you to sit right there. Let's move you a little bit closer so everyone can see from home. Now, Captain Tape, how easy are you going to be to... All right, seriously. into that first piece. Okay. Well, 
I guess it does rip pretty easy. I won't be using you. Okay, well, let's make use of the frame. There you go. Now, how that captain tape is gonna... It's already popped it out of there. Come on! So, how in the world... There must be an easier way to do this. I thought I soldered the last one on, but I could be wrong. Maybe a big X is the way to go. What is the secret? Ha! Hey, Fusion makes everything. What is the secret to getting this sensor to stay right smack where I want it? <laughs> because that's what I'm trying to figure out at the moment. So I am basically doing a big giant X, hoping that somehow this is going to stay. Okay, so you guys can kind of see my, I'd say my work, but it's more of a struggle. <laughs> over here so it's closer. Molly, stop playing with that. Okay, so this is two cords, so I'm trying to get this to all lay flat. No, 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 cat, go away. No, no, no chewing cords. Not the help I was looking for. So you guys can tell me what kind of hot mess that is. <laughs> feel like I'm doing this correctly, but, you know, I have, I gotta admit, I have been enjoying the build. The build is very rewarding. It comes together pretty nicely. The instructions are very good. Chris has done a really good job with these instructions. Okay, so I feel like I have a good amount of tape on these wires here. Probably going a little overkill on this, but I just don't want these guys to pop out. So I figure every couple inches is good. Still working on the Fulgortech A. Yes. Yes, sir. If you guys aren't familiar with the printer, it's a Fulgortech FTI 3 Mega. It's kind of just like a CR10. Same specs anyway. All right, and then he was saying, take the bed to Mr. Wire down. Uh, 
Okay, so I think we're at a good spot here. Just reviewing the documentation to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, we want you. small line there between those pads and I like to have those wires run through them as it appears they are intended. guys check <laughs> so that's what I've done for where these wires run through the where these pads are oops sorry it's fun to have the camera and then trying to remember to do the reverse I wish the, that would sit a little bit more flush but it's a wire no, and no wire is kind of doing whatever it wants to do uh, let's see I got like one more spot there where I'm gonna squeeze some tape on it because I can Kill is just right. And then these wires. Voila. Let's go back to our instructions for a quick second. All right, secure the bed thermostat to the center of the bottom of the bed with the included cap and tape. Solder the black wires down. These have already been done for us. So that is set. I'm clicking on the wrong screen. Uh -huh. All right, and now we are going to essentially, you know, it's kind of neat. I'm looking at the bed there, and uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's interesting how the heated bed is a little, because of our, our the way the bed is situated, um, that's interesting the way that those are set up. So let's go back to the big camera. And I would agree with Caleb, overkill is not going to hurt anything. Alright, let's get these wires up so the cat is not tempted. Now the way this one was cut, I have all kinds of uh, excess up here. You know, stuff that I probably ought to peel off or sand or something because it's definitely lifting on the the, the coating on the uh, the bed. Unless that's something I, or am I supposed to peel that off? <laughs> Let me look. I wonder if that's a coating on the bed, on the aluminum rather, that I'm supposed to peel off because it's, it's, it's like I have this plastic excess which tells me maybe it's yep ta-da okay well that wasn't in the instructions but i'm glad i looked isn't it fun when i think out loud when i'm wondering like why are the edges so fuzzy it's because it's a aluminum plate See if I can get all this off in one shot. All right. So there is that. Uh, if I recall.
And this came with it as well. So am I to assume that this goes straight smack in the center somehow? Well, you know something? I don't think I'm going to use this. And here's why. Because I'm going to be using a polypropylene bed on top of this. So that serves no purpose. And it's not in the instructions anyway. So, haha. -ha. Now, what's interesting is these are all countersunk, and the screws that they mentioned using are, are all panhead. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, those are all panhead size screws, so we would want to use something countersunk. Now, I'm looking at the tools included. Let's see. Bring the uh, toolbox back over. So we now have to deal with. Oh, this is going to be a monster. Wouldn't this be awesome to level? So you you have to use eight of these guys to level this guy. Yeah, I think auto bed leveling is going to be a big upgrade. Two, four, six. Uh, I should have more thumb screws, and I don't. Go looking. And let's see how many uh, springs I have. I have uh, one. Oh, these are a little too. Okay, three, four, five. And six. Okay, so my first thought is why do I only have <laughs> six thumb screws? Are we not going to uh, the wow, this is uh, okay to let you guys know. Uh, what I'm uh, looking at. So we have a couple of these. Uh, let me uh, turn the camera over here. Holy crap, it's actually in focus too. So I got like two different. And uh, I'm just wondering if these guys are the same. Maybe it's an optical illusion because one's shinier than the other. No, they're the same, okay. So I have that. I have these guys. Which leads me to wonder why I don't have all the hardware I need. Hmm. Thinking out loud, thinking out loud, thinking out loud. Do I have spares? Let's see. I do. And I have spare springs as well. So that's good news. So I'm supposed to have eight. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And springs I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank goodness I had an FT5, right? So as a result of uh, having the leftovers from the FT5 build, uh, I have these pieces. So that's fantastic. Let's uh, get all this stuff ready to go. Actually, let's, uh, what have I got for a storage? Well, actually, I have another Groot I can use. So Groot, we're gonna use your brain and put all this stuff in here.
Okay, Groot. You're hanging on to all this stuff. Now the only other piece we don't have is we need 8 M3 by 20 millimeter. These are all countersunk, as you can see here in the sides. And the instructions are calling for these pan head screws. So, I mean, technically, they're not going to print to the very edge. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, David, as well. Uh, of course, right now, the way that printhead's set up uh, and using an auto level, it would require quite a redesign. But, yeah, eight of them. Now, the other thing I'm looking at is, I, do I have any... Um, do those pan heads sit flush? I don't think they do. Again, not to criticize them, but why would you do it that way? Well, okay. This is going to be all right. They sit in there pretty deep. I'm just looking around to see if I found those extra pieces I was looking for. No. Nope. Okay, so now I'll show you a picture here in just a second. So this isn't the end of the world. I, I'm just used to dealing with a lot of different uh, size screws with my R2 build, and you know anything that had been countersunk, you used a, a screw that would work with countersinking. So let me uh, show you. So these guys are going to sit in there pretty deep. As you can see, they're going to be way down in there. Now, am I hurting myself by putting these in advance? So let me uh, see right here in the bottom. There you go. So it, it sits in there pretty deep. So, and these are only M3s. So there's so many of them. So whatever we place on for a surface should work just right. Let's go to the big camera. And here comes the fun. Trying to line these guys up. And then root. Oops. I don't like how little these springs are. All right, one by one. Okay, so you are somewhat in. Wow, bed leveling, eight screws. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be uh, chatting with my CAD friends <laughs> and Tim with the Easy ABL saying, hey, <laughs> what are the chances you can make something for this printer. I don't understand uh, why you would have one in the very back center. Because quite frankly, you can't get at that bed level screw because of the uh, it's right next to the Y motor. Oh yeah, this is not a whole lot of fun. Did I lose that screw yet? No. Nope. Okay, well, I definitely have a different opinion on the design here. Uh, yeah, so this one right back here, I mean, if you were going to adjust that uh, uh, bed screw, I mean, it's literally going to be, well, I mean, if you pull it forward, you'll be accessing it, but I mean, it's directly under the belt. But let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. Let's stay positive. And these springs are so little. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, the minute I lift one up, the other screws come up and uh, they lose their spring. I'd, I'd much rather put something like TiVo springs or uh, one of the CR10 springs under this because they're just bigger. So now we're going to be playing this wild game of which one lost a spring when I lifted it up. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can... Yeah, this is uh, definitely a situation where solid bed mounts <laughs> are very appealing. Okay, so I see this one needs one. Don't want to lose that one. spring. I gotta do the side one and the back one popped out. And let's move you out. Okay. So far Only one popped out. I was expecting a lot worse. Okay, let's roll you back. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna kinda ghetto this. I'm <laughs> gonna use the, uh, <laughs> the level and uh, just see how everything looks from the get-go. And I'm just, I'm not really trying to compress the spring. I'm just trying to get the screw on there so it is actually nice and snug. Um, and I have this level in the middle of the bed. Just hoping that I don't anger the gods. Not that that means a hill of beans if the gantry's off, but anyway. looking at that even though I know I shouldn't count on it one bit for showing me any good information but right now I really don't want to crank down on those uh, bed springs all right stunning view of the ass end of the printer but it's a little tough to get your hands on these spots because you get the rod right nearby here. What's the best way for me to do this agronomically? Maybe I can go straight up from under here. Here we go. Okay. 
And I'm just looking at the level to see if I've messed with how level things are looking. So far, so good. Eight points of leveling. Wow. Um, that's fascinating. Okay. And again, uh, if you wonder what I'm doing, I'm just trying to get the screw in there tight, trying not to compress a spring much. Uh, as you can see from our little bed level, things are mostly good. Not that I can really re rely much on that level to tell me how level things really are, but. Oh, I can't get this one in. Power supply is directly under that part. So let me roll this forward some more. Actually, while I'm right here, thing says oh, let's see Again, just eyeballing with the level. <sighs> okay. So, if you're just tuning in, hello. My name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. Um, we are assembling the Fogotech FTI 3. Mega, it's basically a big giant size version of a, uh, uh, like the i3 design, like you've seen with the CR10, TiVo, and what have you. So what we've done is we've gone ahead and uh, we have the bed and the uh, heater wires uh, plugged in now. Or rather we have these guys uh, here. Um, okay, they've already snipped the wires for us. We need to figure out how to run this wire under here. And uh, this will ultimately go to the uh, bed thermoresistor, which is gonna be another step here. Minnesota Maker, Willies, hello. Uh, a little recap if you haven't uh, kept up. So the original design, has the power supply, uh, you cut the power connector, uh, you go to three bare wires and you plug in the power supply and that's how you power the printer. 
no power switch. Didn't like that idea. Chatted with John uh, Folger about it, uh, looking for some ideas. Uh, he sent me also a better power supply, but he also uh, sent me the power switch that the FT5 uses. So that is pretty much set to go. Uh, I was looking for a way to mount that to the back and I CNC'd a nice little solution here. And again, this is a replay for most of you, but if you're just tuning in, so what happens is that this piece latches right in. And there's not much distance between where this goes to the back of the power supply. The thing that I am missing, I have my three wires that I need to uh, attach uh, to the power supply and then uh, to wire correctly to the switch. Uh, the thing is, is uh, I need more of uh, these guys. I have two, I need three. So I am pausing on that part of the build. So I just like the idea that, you know, I actually have a power switch on the back of the printer so that when I want to start it up or when I'm done, you know, I can power it off. Um, the original design is you either attach it to a uh, surge suppressor and you use that to turn it off and on, or you just unplug it and plug it back in. And uh, didn't like that. Didn't like that design. So I'm kind of changing a few things along the way. I told myself I'd build it stock, but um, here I am. <laughs> uh, what we just finished doing, and I kid you not, uh, this thing, this, bed, this belt, uh, bed plate, and actually just let me show you on the instructions, uh, this literally had, look at all this, I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have uh, the bed sitting on these uh, uh, eight screws, and uh, so that is uh, eight knobs you have to adjust uh, for printing with this guy and uh, wow <laughs> that's quite a bit so and the screws are uh, I'm sorry the uh, springs are, are a little bit on the uh, the wimpy side so uh, yeah so like I said right now we're building it stock we're following the instructions to see how it goes but uh, man right now uh, leveling that bed is not going to be a whole bunch of fun the uh, also came with a uh, like a build tack like surface, and uh, I, you know, I suppose I could adhere it on here. I mean, that's what they did with the FT5, and then the glass goes on top of that. Uh, I have uh, something else I wish to use. I might actually have it on me, perhaps. Uh, from Tiny Machines, uh, they sell these uh, polypropylene beds. So. Uh, uh, one of these, uh, well, wait, no, this is my TiVo Tornado one, so I need to grab the one off the FT5 because the TiVo Tornado is a uh, longer, but uh, anyway, this is going to be uh, uh, the kind of surface I use on my printer. Um, what I could do for testing, I could do like everyone else does because it's very, very ghetto. Uh, I could use a mirror tile. Uh, a mirror tile will work uh, just fine for testing anyway. Uh, so that's where I'm at on the build anyway. So hello, um, if you are new here, welcome. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, please become one. Love to have, I love to have additional subscribers. I've been doing awesome on that lately. So for a little channel like mine, uh, we've gone from 100 people to just under 1,900 people in the course of the year. So very awesome to have you guys on board. Also, another chance to show off here. So I made this test piece. It, 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 it's, it's a nice test fit. It even fits flush across the top here. Uh, so I went ahead and I... Uh, Made a second one and I painted it because you know I'm building BB-8 and I like my BB-8 orange so that's going to be the one that gets installed. So that's a quick catch up as to where I'm at with this thing. Now what I've been doing is I've been backtracking because uh, we didn't have the Kapton tape that we needed to do the bed install so that's why we've strolled back several steps and uh, that's where we are in the instructions right now. And I'm just gonna zoom ahead forward because we did this when we did that. And I'm just trying to make sure we're not forgetting anything. Uh, I got this zoomed way in. So that's been done. Now, the other thing that we have to do, and it shows it here actually, is this power supply install downward we have to take the old one out and put the new one in. So that's gonna be a good time. So what that means is I need to get some stuff out of the way here real quick. Let me get the Groot out of the way. And 
you may be asking, why a different power supply? Because it has more power. So let's uh, get some stuff moved around here. Oh, let me look through my, I, I didn't look at my chat buffer real quick. Hey guys. Okay, I'm um, gonna get rid of this sweatshirt because I'm toasty. Alrighty. So let's move the switch because we're not gonna wire that in until tomorrow. And I'm gonna put this up on this edge. And it looks like we're gonna to have to do a little bit of careful maneuvering. Because we do have things already plugged into this power supply that will have to come out. That screwdriver is way too little. So we're kind of doing that backward step, but that's okay. So out he comes. Fortunately, we're not that far into the build where we can get away with this. turn for you. Okay, and then our extruder fan. Oh boy, so let's move you guys over here. Now, getting this power supply out, we're going to have to undo some stuff because one of the screws is under the electronics board. Awesome! I say with great sarcasm. Uh, yeah, that's not gonna work at all. Okay, let's put him right here. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to remove three screws, three nuts, uh, so that this can pivot, I can get under the screw, and we can work on getting the new power supply in. Um, I will say this is not ideal, but not the worst thing we've ever done. And I'm just checking the chat because I haven't said hello in a while. I hope everyone is having a nice chilly evening. Someone mentioned 25 degrees. I think uh, not that this is really something I would say I'm winning at, but I believe my temperature is colder. I think we're in the lower teens. So, but as you guys know, when it comes to cold weather, there's, <laughs> there's really no winter. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? Seven people viewing, this is great. Yeah, it's our wild Saturday night. Okay, so just to review, so this thing has these uh, M3 screws and it has a spacer because it mounts right next to the frame. And getting these spacers back in is not gonna be any kind of fun, but. will be okay. And let's do this. Oops. Dear Santa, Paul needs a wrench kit, a small wrench kit. Because using pliers on these small spots is not a whole lot of fun. Okay, get that nylon spacer. So, now let's give this guy a little pivot. And let's unscrew this without dropping the massive power supply on anything important. Yes, 
you are great at this. General, I was just going <laughs> to... You made me think of it. I would very much appreciate if you guys would give the video a thumbs up. That jar in the corner right there, uh, you guys had mentioned that if you want to tip me, you can tip me. If I am entertaining you or if you like my channel and you wish to donate to me, feel free to hit that tip jar. Much appreciate it. A uh, couple people did last time, actually. That was pretty cool. Hey, a couple bucks here and there. That's fantastic. I appreciate it. Now, the hard part with this is you got to get it flush. And it's not easy to see. Okay, this thing is really in the way. It's hard to get this guy just right. And his Allen wrench is so freaking short and I'm winding myself into a cord. Ah. Okay, that's biting in. Let's see if I can get this guy to do the same thing. These guys go in pretty good. The uh, you know sometimes when you have these CNC pieces that are pre-hole cut for a power supply. You know, you figure they're gonna fit in there perfect, but every now and then these power supplies, maybe they got a variation or maybe the CNC machine had a bad day. And this one, I definitely had to give it a little tug to, to get it in there just right. But here we go. So that's in there. Uh, in case you are wondering, let's see, uh, this is set to 110. I did make sure I checked that. Although, what I want to do. I want to look at the sticker one more time. Okay, oh, reefed on you. Oh, colorful metaphor. I want to yell, but I won't. Okay. Nope, oh, no sticker here. Okay. Uh, if you're wondering what the difference is, let's see. This guy was a 360, and this guy is a 500. Okay. Fan down. Here, 110. Let's do this one more time. I thought this one had a uh, sticker on the side here with these numbers. I just wanted to check the uh, inspection while I was thinking of it. But that's okay, too. is driving me crazy. Oh, there you are. You're teething in. Good. Let's do the next one. Ah, uh, let me see. How is my audience doing? Eight of you. So cool. Well, what are you guys doing on a Saturday night? Besides lending me some emotional support. Don't do that. Okay. Don't let go of the power supply when it only has a half grip. <laughs> Come on, you. turn so I don't F that up. Oh, there you go. 
There we go. Well, one thing's for sure, making this change after is a little bit trouble when you have all these wires in the way. Okay, this feels like everything is going in pretty well. Well, or, or are you? That one's in. Oh, this one popped out. Oh, I see why. It's a smidge out that way. So what I gotta do is I gotta kinda catch it at an angle, I suppose. Or squeeze like hell on it. Kind of starting to feel like that scene from uh, Happy Gilmore. Get in your home. Uh, let's see. You have to sleep soon. Wow, what time zone are you in? Or what time is it? 8.48? Going to bed at 8 o'clock on a Saturday night? <laughs> I know I ought to. My sleep cycle is pretty screwed up lately. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to work on putting all these spacers in. We're not going to go crazy and tighten anybody up right yet. we got to make sure we got all those spacers in first. Oh, and did I mention having these wires in the way is awesome? Okay, one. It's going to suck is that one in the corner. Did I mention the spacers are fun? Cool. And I am really, really, really hoping, I've been talking to John over to Folder Tech about getting hold of a, an FT6. I don't think Santa's going to be delivering one anytime soon, but I have been saving my pennies, so I'm ready to place the order <laughs> soon here. Okay, so all of the electronic spacers are back in, and we can work on buttoning these guys up. That, uh, his new printer, that FT6, is huge. It's a wider version of uh, an FT5, from what I can gather. Although, I don't think it's as tall. I don't think it prints as tall as the FT5. I'd have to look at the specs again. But, uh... I saw some pictures on the uh, Facebook group where someone was doing a, an assembly of one. Uh, I guess he was testing it for the company. And uh, it looked pretty friggin' massive. So we're doing a little backtracking. Uh, next up, we're going to do the uh, the wiring. Uh, we'll plug the wires into the new power supply. I still have to work on getting the uh, uh, the bed um, heater wires and the uh, thermal resistor plugged into the electronics. I got to make sure I don't forget any steps here, since we went out of order a little bit. And I'm just pulling on that board to make sure everything is. In there safe. Oh, let's see. Let's bend you up. On, open that. Now, next up is going to be since we uh, unhooked everything. Let's see how far do I go to pause it. So I have three pauses right here. Loosen you up. Loosen you up. And let's run. I want to run that first one, right, a little looser. And then the uh, other guy right here. And 
And my fan, I really want to have the fan kind of sandwich in with the uh, the connector here. Like spin you around here a couple times. Okay, so I think I got that. I got that fella. So he's got. I just want to pivot him a little bit. There we go. So what I've done. Uh, let me move my camera here so it makes a little bit more sense. So as I'm putting these guys in, uh, I put uh, uh, this wire directly under the uh, spade for this one. Um, so not only have I, uh, you know, have I freed up this one should I need it for something else, but it's just, I just like it better that it's sandwiched under that larger connector. So then we'll get this guy in and we'll plug in our uh, negatives the same way and uh, then we're largely done uh, with the connections uh, to the board until we uh, start messing with the AC stuff uh, when I have the right connectors. And old power supply. Jeez, I guess we'll just put you in the uh, up here under the spare parts for misfit children, maybe. I don't know. Um, okay, so now, so one, two, and three. My negatives are at four, five, and six. So. Extra loose, so I can not only fit this guy in, but the black lead for the uh, extruder fan. That looks like it's gonna fit pretty good. And I think in hindsight, I probably would have crimped this in with the wire. straight. Good. Snap you back down. Nice. So that looks good. Uh, let's look back at our instructions, make sure we haven't missed anything. So we just went through and we hooked you back up. Now this is good to look at because I need to look at this spot here. Oops, I right clicked when I didn't want to write. I want to scroll. Heated bed. Goes to my limit switches. Yep. So I'm trying to follow the train of thought here. So my thermal resistor is zoom, 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 zoom. So you're over there. that right you're right in the middle right yeah you're in the second spot yeah because there's nothing in the third okay yeah yeah because the other one is the uh, 
temperature reading on the uh, printhead. Okay, got it. Well, uh, now my heated bed, heated bed, red, 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 these two. And yeah, so for those, we are going to use, we're going to make a little change here. So what we're going to do, first of all, is we're going to run these, just like we did with the thermal resistor. We're going to run these under the bed. I almost wonder if I should have those in some sort of harness. You know, what's the best way to do this? This keeps on getting looped up. Oh, uh, let me look at my other printer real quick. I'm surprised I don't mention in the instructions how that should be bundled up or or wrapped up together. As I would think they should be. Okay, they were, these were these were pre-cut. These are nice. Uh, this is a really cool tool I have. And we're going to use the blue ones. So. What we're going to do, let me switch cameras here real quick here. We're going to use these uh, ferrite cores and we'll trim them accordingly because they will fit really nice in that connector. And let's just make sure these are happy. Small screwdriver. Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise to open these old guys. Yeah, those connectors are going to work really good. We're going to have to short them by about uh, know, two millimeters or so, but that's good. That's really good. So, what we got going on is. Let me move to the uh, laptop camera because it's a little bit better on the focus. So we got this guy here. We got it all spun up. Let's get you on there nice and straight. And this guy's going to kind of thread on. And we're going to take this feller and crimp. And that's not going anywhere. And then what we'll do is we will use this to shorten it up to something like this. Then what we have, let me go to my external view. Got a nice long extension cord on this one. And, uh, and there it is. So that is uh, in there good and tight, no bare wires. As you can see, I did the same thing here at the other uh, connectors. So uh, we'll do the same thing for the other one and get that in there. Uh, the only thing I'm not sure what to do about here is the whole running the, the wiring and harnesses and such for the uh, thermal resistor and the uh, you know the, the bed stuff um, I guess we're kind of making it up as we go along here still uh, so we'll sort that out as we go but right now I mean we can at least make the connection and come back uh, and then 
put some sort of tubing or whatever to organize that a little bit better. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> there's a lot of wires. It's quite a mess up here. So let me put the connector on one more and uh, maybe we'll take a break after that. Hang on one sec. Okay. So one more time with enthusiasm. We got a uh, blue connector. I can actually set down for this again. Sorry if the camera is being a little wonky on the focus. That seems to have to be our luck with the Logitech right now. And let's get you on there. And I like to spin it on just to be sure it gets on there all the way to the bottom. Push. Tuck on that, make sure it doesn't come loose. And we're good. All we have to do now is trim it up a little bit. There it is. Yay. <laughs> so, yeah, the wires are, uh, are definitely a bit of a mess. <laughs> I'm not sure the best way to, uh, to run these wires for the, uh, you know, because obviously that's going to swing back and forth. Um, yeah, wow. <laughs> I don't know. That might be something I have to come back to. Uh, there we go. There's another box of the cat to play with. And these two ends that I just clipped off. That's trash. So a little bit of forward progress is good. Now next up is going to be dealing with the, uh, the AC power. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have with the uh, this wiring, we got more than enough wire to, to make it to the connector wherever we put it. So that will be sufficient. So now the printer. is starting to look and feel more like a printer. thing I'm noticing is that since this thing was on its side I want to look at one more thing because that belt looks remarkably slack and I don't understand for the life of me how it got so slack I do that got loose Let's make sure. That looks pretty straight. Well, that was interesting. I just kind of caught that in the corner of my eye that Boy, that belt looks really loose. Yeah, it's still... I 
line motor looks good. That's got some tag to her. Well, that's interesting. So just so you can see what I'm looking at here. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely moving nice, but that was one of my worries about all this. So this might be something we come back to, to tighten up. And I can do that. I did leave enough slack behind. All right. On the to-do list. Yeah, these um, see, I wired these cables to go under, and since this goes way back. They may need to be on the outside. So that might be a change I have to make, which is easy peasy, because that connector is right here. All right, so there is one quick change. And if you're wondering if that was a jet engine firing up in my basement, because I'm in the frigid north, that would be my furnace. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I saw some guys join in there. Uh, the rails, hello. Um, Indy, is it Indy Helis? I don't know what size these are, actually. Um, Eight millimeter comes to mind, but I don't think that is correct. But what I can do is I can go back to the directions here. And if they weren't zoomed in 400%, they'd probably show up a lot faster for me. Now, are you asking about the, uh, the diameter of the rails that the uh, printer is riding on? Because those, dun, dun, dun. I'm looking through right now because these are using LM8UUs, so I'm guessing eight millimeter. Well, let's double check. I'm scrolling through the docs. Eight millimeter. Yeah, here they are. Yeah. So these are uh, eight millimeter PCRs. So that's what this thing is using. Uh, as far as up on top. Now, if you're asking about on bottom, it's the same thing because you basically, um, it's eight millimeters for the verticals, the horizontals, and then the uh, down to the bottom rail too. Flex, haven't seen any, they've been pretty good. Um, Again, uh, you know, having not printed with this thing yet, we will have to see uh, how they are in the long run. I'm just going to uh, move these wires while it's in my mind. All right, so we want these wires to be above. And I can feed you guys back in now. Come on, be nice to me. You know, Molly. And so on my to-do list of things I wonder about is the harness <laughs> to uh, for the bed wiring. Now that I have this stuff all out here, I'm pretty sure I want to bundle this up or, or you know wrap this up in something. I just don't know what I have that would really be good at the job. I mean, I could wire tie it, for first of all. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea to do right now. OK. 
Okay. So it's not exactly strain relief, but I'm just gonna leave this like this. And I'll leave a little nub so I can pull on it. So there. I don't know. I might rub it on. It's like this thing bottoms out on something. Alright, I'm hearing noises. And See, I'm watching this thing almost as if it's taking a bump. know what that sound is. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed the uh, chat here for a second. Oh, the printer head? I'm sorry. No, actually the uh, the print head moves along real nicely. Where I'm hearing sound effects now is I'm feeling bumps. That. That sounds like I got a bad bearing. Don't know if you guys can hear that or not. It's not that moving around. That devil's doing that. Ah, we've come so far in this build, I don't want to hear crap like that. <laughs> it's like, whoa, okay, let's move you up. Uh, I don't want to rest you on that, like that. Uh, let's uh, have you rest on the frame of the rod, okay. Um, So that's moving really good. Interesting. I'm stumped. When laying on its side, it's, it's moving perfectly. Okay, let's put our thinking caps on. So laying on its side, no noise. Sounds really, really good. But when I go back to horizontal, bump, bump, bump. Why would I do that? That's really weird. I thought maybe there was something. Uh... Wow, I don't know. My brain is stumped. Ah. Well. Pulleys are on there really good. The belt definitely has some slop into it. Um, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I can do real quick? I can. I thought ahead when I did this.
if I can tension this thing. So my thought is, oh, I lost my chair. Son of a. Okay. I still got bumping. The hell. <laughs> well. This might have to uh, be fixed another time. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. But you did mention a good thing about tightening up that uh, either pulley because I did have the, uh, you, I had the, I'm, I'm learning how to use my words tonight. <laughs> uh, I did have the, uh, the Y belt uh, where it attaches to the uh, Y motor. Uh, when I installed all that, oh, you want out of here? See ya. Uh, what I'm trying to say, and actually, maybe I can say what picture is better here because uh, I'm kind of being a big dumb animal here. So at least when I did this, I, I gave myself plenty of room to adjust that. So that's what I, I just did. I just pulled that in good and tight. Uh, it was a little on the loose side, so it's it's definitely much better now. But just moving this back and forth. Now the only thing I can think of is I wouldn't expect to feel that bumping even with the stepper motor attached. But maybe with the stepper engaged, despite what it's doing, that's causing some of that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so that's going to be uh, uh, something I'll have to uh, definitely uh, delve into uh, a little bit later. So now, where are we, are we at with the build? Let me look at our instructions here real quick. You finally caught me live. How about that? <laughs> well, it is, it is vertical. The thing is, it's, you can, you can physically feel the bumping. I can feel it right in the middle. It's, it literally feels like I'm going up and downhill. And you can see, actually, you know what? I have a camera. Let me show you. Let me see if I can. All right, there is a. Oh, even in focus. Okay, now watch. See that? Okay, so I think we've removed the pulley as a problem there. It's just really weird how when this is going back and forth, you can physically, and I'm, I'm trying to just grab the other end here, uh, you can see it go up and down. See that up and down? So. Yeah, isn't that weird? So the only thing that can be is the colorful metaphor bearing. Uh, that's the only thing I can be. Um, or unless the rod has, you know. The other thing I could do is, I mean, I can take some sewing machine oil and I can I can run some oil across that and just, maybe it's got a rough spot. I, I, I really don't know. I mean, let me get the, uh, let me go to, uh, So we'll take our rusty, dusty, all-purpose oil and uh, go very light on a paper towel here. And let's close it because sometimes the cats get up here and knock shit over. And... All right, so let's... Uh... That's the only thing I can think of is that 
But again, when the machine was sideways, we didn't have the bumping. We didn't have that effect. Whatever we want to call it. <laughs> Screw up? I don't know. All right, so there's a lot of goop we got off. And... Yeah, I'm still... Let me give you guys the... Uh... Let me go back to the other camera here so you guys can see it here. Okay, so here's our bed plate, and again, I'm not gonna, I'm not pressing down on it because it's it's pretty in there pretty tight. Uh, pay attention to this line here. Okay, this is the top of the bed, and just watch what happens when I push across this. And let me give you a little bit better angle here too. You, you guys noticing that? Okay, I, I mean I don't I don't want to overstate the point, but it's uh, it, it's definitely uh, bouncing around there. So so it's, it seems to be in that bigger bearing. Um, yeah, so not cool. <laughs> Um, I'll certainly ask some questions about that. Um, I, I talk to John Fulger uh, uh, usually every day or so, you know, just chit-chatting. But, yeah, so looking head-on, it's your right one, but to me, yeah, it's the left one. Uh, actually, I can tell you exactly which part that is. Let me go to the instructions here. Um, so the one that is problematic, let me go to our instructions here. Uh, so this is the side view so this is the right side where these two guys and this is the right one uh, which is the uh, one that uh, we're currently having problems with at the, at the time I can see it left yes yeah, in the left bearing yep yeah. yeah so isn't that something so anything that's mass produced can have a have a bum model every now and then so I'll reach out to him and uh, and if he wants I can show him a video clip here and say uh, yeah my bearing is definitely wonky now the good news is that you know getting that out of here isn't the worst thing in the world it's certainly not gonna be a lot of fun because some top pieces will have to come off and it seems like I'm doing a lot of backtracking <laughs> on this build but that's okay it's okay so that takes care of that so that gives us an idea of some things I got to do. And then the other thing too is this wiring thing is a bit of a cluster something. I'll let you guys choose the metaphor that you prefer. <laughs> yeah, definitely need to put something around that. I think I have some come to think of it. Yeah, I mean, I could use some of this stuff. Uh, it's not my favorite stuff in the world because it just screams cheap. <laughs> but if it gets the job done, I like the, I, I can't find it locally and the only place I saw it was, I think, at one of the VIP autos, one of our uh, auto supply vendors there that's real big in the East Coast, uh, also known as O'Reilly. But uh, they had a fair amount of this wire stuff that uh, is plastic, but it just looks like a giant ca uh, candy cane when it's all done. It just wraps all around, and uh, it does a great job. And it's a lot easier to get on than some of these. Dun, dun, dun. No, I'm not going to do a cable chain. Uh, I have a cable chain on my FT5, and a cable chain eats up a lot of space. I mean, they look nice, don't get me wrong, but I'm not a fan of the cable chain. Um, unless you're dealing with something like a CNC machine or something that has a really, you know, high volume of wires that it needs to tuck away. 
So I'm just gonna, for now, see, and that's the other thing with this stuff is, I just handled all that sewing machine oil to clean the rails and I'm trying to peel the stuff apart at the same time. I am not the most coordinated person you're ever gonna meet. <laughs> Let's just say you won't see me on the dance floor winning any awards. My coordination is not legendary. <laughs> All right, let's push you back up there. So I think that looks pretty good. There's probably some better ways to do this, but I just, with all these wires dangling free, I just really want something to stay in place here. Okay. And let me get, uh, I got, well, what do I got? One, two, three, I got four cameras here, so. <laughs> I'm trying to be good to you guys so that uh, you can see what's going on uh, at the same time that I'm, I'm working on it here. So, oops. So I think that looks okay. Again, not my favorite material to work with, but let me uh, see if I can trim this up. Got to make sure I put this stuff away because uh, I have a house full of cats and uh, as you know if you have cats uh, they live at your house you just stay at the house so <laughs> everything you own is fair game to them I'm trying to get the thermal resistor wire at the bottom so it doesn't pop out That's what I've been struggling with, is trying to get the thermoresistor cable in under the bed wires. You know, I'm just going to unplug you. Boy, that goes in there good. Come on. Everything is coming straight out at me. Well, the good news is at least this stuff is going on pretty tight. I know they sell this at Harbor Freight and you can get all kinds of giant sizes of it. Yeah, those end stop mounts are uh, not my favorite either. I've had my troubles with the ones on the FT5 as well. You know, plastic on a on a chrome rod is not my ideal setup, but for a kit, you know, it is what it is. You can always upgrade it to something you prefer. This is going to be okay. I think I've got way more than I really need right here, so let me go ahead and trim that. doing is I'm twisting it as well because I really want that white wire to stay put and let's put a wire tie on the end here okay and put 
the connector back in. And now what I can do is I can move the camera and show you the, the mess I've made here. And so this guy is in, comes all the way back here, and then uh, tied it off. And then we got the connectors going where they got to go. So I should have enough slack to go back and forth okay. God, I can feel that thing bumping. So, voila. Glad I found this stuff. I used quite a bit of this stuff inside my R2-D2 because R2, you know, obviously bounces around quite a bit. Uh, needed something to hold the wiring in. And uh, it's always kind of fun when you go to Lowe's and the attendant's like, hi, wh what's your project? What can I help you with? And after a while, I kind of developed a reputation because they were like, well, he's the guy building the R2-D2 and <laughs> they kind of gave me a weird look, which I'm quite used to. So what we got going on here? I got, wow, I got some people's watching. Hello. Uh, I try to do this every half an hour. So let me do a quick, hello. Uh, my name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. Uh, if you are already a regular viewer, you see my videos. Hello, good to see you again. If you've never seen my stuff before, yet you're peaked and interested, subscribe. Love to have more viewers. Uh, I've had a lot of good feedback. I've had a lot of fun doing this channel. Um, I try to post a lot of good stuff that's useful. Uh, I try not to be one of those channels that just makes videos for the sake of making videos uh, and chasing their uh, YouTube stats or whatever. Uh, I do it because I have fun. So welcome aboard. This is the Fulgurtech FTI3 Mega. As you can see, it strongly resembles a CR10. Uh, which is also the like, similar to the GTEC A10 design, which is basically the Prusa design, the, the moving Y axis. Uh, the build volume on this thing will be 300 by 300 by 400. Exact same dimensions as my CR10, my CR10S, and my TiVo Tornado. The interesting thing with this design, as you can see right up in here, uh, the Z screw comes all the way down to here and it's, and it's hanging in the air. Uh, it is fully supported by the Z coupler. So I am very interested to see how that holds up over time because uh, with my CR10, even though I had a, uh, well, it was a pretty good setup when it came in, uh, I didn't have too many troubles outside of the print head being loose, but that was fixable. I'm curious if this thing is gonna get stretched out just from sheer gravity of, of hanging on to this, you know, uh, up and down. Fortunately, it's, it's got two of them. So uh, maybe it won't be any problem. The, uh, the print head is huge. Uh, it's it got a big stepper motor and a big extruder and uh, I guess it's the J-Rod design. I'm not sure exactly which one that is. Uh, uh, the stock stepper drivers is, yeah, what it has. Actually, that reminds me, I need to put the uh, uh, heat sinks on there uh, at some point here to keep them cool. On my FT5, what I did on mine, not only did I put heat sinks on, but in the enclosure, uh, there's a 120 millimeter hole cut in the back, and uh, I'm using the same kind of uh, fan that your PC has, so I have a tremendous amount of airflow uh, going through there. Uh, as a result, though, uh, with my FT5, I've never had any issues with stepper drivers as far as skipping steps or layer shifting. Uh, the problem with my FT5 has been the melamine construction of the bed. Uh, I can get the corners nice and level, but the center is always way down or too high. I've tried shimming it, uh, and I wind up with a situation where uh, it's level here, 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 and here, but not the rest. So with my FT5, I can get some really great prints if I'm not using the full size of the bed. But what's the sense of that when you bought a large-scale printer? The solution is on the way. Uh, the 713 Maker finally had aluminum beds in stock. And uh, mine has shipped uh, as well has, as well as his heated bed, so we'll be making that upgrade soon. The uh, yep, that, exactly right. Oh, you have twenty one hundreds. Yeah, I was thinking about doing twenty one oh eights on uh, on that as well too. I, I've heard some good things. I believe you have to reverse them or some other stuff. Uh, I don't know if they go in. 
uh, differently or if you have to change the firmware. I can't remember. Uh, with all these printers, I have seven printers, so I'm always losing track of you know which one has which drivers on them and, and what have you. Uh, my favorite, as you can see behind me, is my Ultimaker 2 Plus. Very expensive printer, but it does very good work. The only trouble is it can't do big stuff. And uh, as you may know from uh, my build blog and other stuff and my videos, I'm building a BB-8 and all those pieces are huge. Uh, you can probably see a few domes sitting over here in the corner or part of the frame. So uh, I definitely want my FT5 to, to work properly. And uh, with that new bed showing up, uh, I'm gonna have to tip that guy over and uh, you know get the rods out and the Z screws out and uh, install the new one. And I also have an easy ABL kit from TH3D and one of the guys on Thingiverse, I can't remember his name, but he had made a BL touch mount. And I reached out to him and I said, you know, I like that your mount is built into the uh, Titan Arrow and that's really slick, but any chance that you could make the hole for the mount on that just a little bit bigger? Uh, I have an easy ABL, I have a 12 millimeter attachment. I said, you know, if you could make that a little bit wider, I bet I could put my easy ABL in there and uh, he was kind enough to do so. So that is something I want to try. So a lot of, a lot of upgrades I want to make to the FT5. Um, I also want to make some changes. I want to have the filament. I don't want to do this. I, I'm not a fan of filaments being mounted up high. Uh, I prefer them to be off to the side because you have a printer that's moving and swaying and the last thing you want to do is add weight to the top of it so that when it moves and sways, it now has a big weight up top here so we can sway some more. Don't want that. And again, I'm not a physics guru. I'm just, from what I've observed watching my CR10 and TiVos do that, uh, I definitely prefer to have the filament on the side sitting on a couple ball bearings or uh, you know the 608 ZZ uh, skate, uh, skateboard uh, bearings. And that works really slick. Yeah, hey Jack, how you doing? No, I'll, I'll tell you, my favorite printer um, design is also like the Ultimaker style. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not crazy about the whole Y axis moving. And I had told friends that way back when. I said, you know, I've seen the early Mendel printers, you know, from the RepRap uh, open source stuff. Um, and here I am, I got basically five of these machines now. I said I don't like that design, and here I am, I got five of them. Um, so what I like is they do print large volume, but you do have to watch out with the whole jerk settings and acceleration and, and stuff like that. I like the idea of the FT5. I like that setup. I love the Ultimaker setup. Um, I, I had a couple Ultimaker 3s here. I would love to be able to afford the six grand or whatever for one of their fives, uh, but I can't do that. But I do like the idea where it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy, to go ahead and if you want to seal that up, like with the FT5, you can put some foam board around it and, and you seal it up. So let me look at the chat buffer real quick, see if I'm missing anything. Yeah. So, but the cool thing is we live in a time right now where we can go on Thingiverse or we can go to the uh, FolderTech uh, Facebook group and we can say, hey guys, do you, here's what I'm trying to do, um, you know, can, and here's what I'm trying to figure out, can you help me? So we live in a time, you know, and I, I remember the BBS days when we had shareware, uh, where people are sharing their ideas. So it's really cool that, especially once you have a 3D printer, uh, if you need to modify the design at all, you can do so. Like these clips right here, these aren't part of the kit. These guys look, uh, <laughs> I, I, I love these things. They look like, to me, Tron. But uh, these are just 30-30. Someone designed them and put them up there for free. And uh, so what I've been doing is I've been using them to uh, uh, place my uh, cabling into the groove. And it does a really nice job. Just snap right in there. Yeah, the Ultimaker 5 is nice. I've, I've had a really good relationship with Ultimaker for a very, very long time. Uh, back when the Ultimaker 3 first came out, uh, they flew me down. Uh, they were like, hey, you're... Oh, the cat found a ball. Isn't that great? Um, they flew me down to New York City, and I got to see one up close and personal, and I got to meet the entire crew. Um, it was great, and uh, it was fun to meet manufacturers that literally have rooms full of Ultimaker 2s that they use for low level production. So here I am, I'm a hobbyist. I'm like, you guys, you know, I'm building projects. All right. Yeah. 
This is going to keep me up all night. So, now that I have stolen the cat's <laughs> plastic ball with the bell on it, let's resume. Uh, but it was fun to meet these people that actually have, uh, they run manufacturing companies and they have rooms full of these 3D printers and, uh, and there they go. Joey Kelly. You know what's interesting? Someone asked me if I did offer or wear a nerdy is cool hat or a t-shirt or, or a polo shirt or something like that. And I thought long and hard about it. And if you look at my logo, I have a Stormtrooper, I have Batman, I have R2-D2, and I have BB-8. So I literally have, well, let's see, right there, I have Walt Disney, Lucasfilm, and DC Comics that would probably kick my ass in court <laughs> the first time I tried to offer a t-shirt with those logos. So I guess the t-shirts are out. But it's a nice thought. So now... The next step with this printer is going to be, I am going to pick up some more of, and let me just show them to you because I know some of you guys came in late. I need more of these connectors, okay? So essentially, I have a bunch of the crimp on connectors, but we don't want to have any bare metal showing up on either end, just like over here. This way, we're just dealing with wires. <clears throat> so that if, if, <laughs> If for whatever reason, if I reach into the back of the printer and have to uh, grab after something, I am not going to zap myself. Uh, I don't know. Call me crazy. Something about, you know, amperage and knocking myself out of the chair kind of thing. So I'm going to pick up some more of those. And uh, tomorrow we'll work on uh, trying to get AC power to this thing. The printer, as you may or may not be aware, is... The way this kit is, is you have the AC power cord and the instructions say to cut off the end, take those three bare wires, plug them into the power supply because the power supply is fused. And then the way you power the printer is you plug it in and the printer turns on. No switch. Don't like that. So we were chatting about this the other evening and one of the guys had said, well, you ought to see if you can get hold of like the power plug combination switch the FT5 comes with. So did that, John Folger uh, sent a better power supply and he did send me over that plug. And uh, we kind of talked about it online and we said, well, let's get a piece of cardboard and see what it would take to make it fit in the back, uh, fit the plug and then be close enough for the wires to connect. So we did that. And we came up with this and let me move it to the laptop camera because that one's a little bit better. So, I CNC'd this piece. So what I got, the plug is in here. I have the uh, top pieces here for the uh, T-nuts so that when this is plugged into the back of the uh, printer, uh, this is flush with the printer. And then back here, all I have to do is run my uh, connectors. Now, since I'm a R2 builder and a BB-8 builder, once I knew that worked, I made a second one. And the second one, I spray painted so it's nice and pretty. Now look, the most amazing thing about this thing is the fact that I was able to get spray paint to stick to this thing in Maine in the middle of winter. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, the basement is usually around 59 degrees, so it came out pretty good. So, and what I can do is let me get my lovely extra camera here. I can somewhat, if I can do this correctly. So the one thing that's going to stink about this thing is getting it around all the wires. Oh, one of my wires popped out. That's great. More homework. But what's cool is this sits flush. So it shouldn't be, shouldn't be in the way of anything. So how about that? Little innovation. So let me go ahead and move these guys here. And I wanna, while I'm thinking of it, let's do one more. Dun, dun, dun. Let's tip this over. Cause I will not sleep all night knowing that one of those electrical connectors popped out on me. There. 
Now you're in there, your SOB. Let's make sure all the rest are in there good and tight. Yeah, we only needed about a quarter turn. There. Now these in place. So there is that. Boom. So yeah, so it's getting pretty. We're getting there. Um, it's funny because there's been a few roadblocks along the way, but uh, I just like the idea. It's not so much a safety thing, but it's just even my cheap GTEC printer, which completely sucks, <laughs> and I've had it for less than a month, uh, has a power switch. So this thing should have a power switch too. That's just my thought. It's not that hard to add, and uh, the folks at Fulgercheck were great. They I asked, and uh, they said, no problem, here you go. So that's awesome. Good customer support. Oh, I meant to also point out, let's see, looking at the clock. I try to remind myself every couple of minutes to say hello to new people. So, hello, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. See that jar in the corner? That is the tip jar. So, if you like what you're seeing, if you want to help me out, feel free to tip away. Appreciate it. Um, Joey, I know you're loaded, so, you know, nothing less than 10, all right? No, he's probably not even watching anymore. But anyway, uh, I try not to be one of those channels that's always begging, you know, please subscribe, please give me money, please be a Patreon. If you want to do it, great. If not, no worries. I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing this for fun. I'm not trying to quit my day job and do this full time. I'm just having fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I just... Braxton, I mean, that was my thought. I mean, I got this far into the build and I was looking at the pieces going, where is it? <laughs> you know, maybe I'm, I mean, I have a beta kit. I have one of the early kits. Uh, and then some upgrade pieces were sent to me um, a few weeks later saying, we made a couple changes, here you go. Uh, so yeah, so as I got through this, I kept on looking going, did I, did I miss a step? Is my PDF wrong? So yeah, so. Not that hard to fix. Um, curious how the limit switches are gonna work out. I know on the FT5, they they took a lot of work to make work just right. Um, let me see, so I have the, the other thing that's crazy, I don't know if you guys saw it earlier, this bed has eight screws. So it literally has eight springs and eight bed adjustment knobs. So leveling this thing is going to be, which metaphor shall I use? A challenge. <laughs> so. I know there's a couple of things that have gone through my mind as far as things I would change on this print design. Um, let me show you something from the side angle here. Look at the size of that print head. Okay, so you got a big giant stepper motor, you got the J rod print head, and then of course you got the fan over here as well, too. Um, that thing is just huge. I mean, look at all the, look at the, the space it takes. But uh, so that's one of those things that I would love to swap out. Now, the mount here is already set up to handle a stepper. So that's cool. So I'm thinking maybe I've had good luck with Titan arrows in the past. I would love to make this thing lighter, though. I would love to have this thing be like, you know, uh, instead of being direct drive, have it being, you know, bowed and driven. And that would make that print head really, really light. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not very good at CAD. I'm not very good at uh, stuff like that, but I'm thinking something like a, uh, a micro Swiss. Uh, that would be super light. It's all metal. It can handle up to 300 degrees Celsius. So that would give it some flexibility with materials. Uh, I just have to find a way or speak to someone that's really good with Fusion 360 about saying, hey, <laughs> here, here's where the attachment points are. Um, is there any way we can convert this over to use uh, an all metal hot end for micro Swiss and uh, where's your tip jar? I'll help you out. So, oh, messages. Well, here's the thing, it's, it's funny you say that, but you have to remember those, those wagon wheel knobs you have. Remember on the FT5, the bed doesn't move, okay? So that's great. This whole bed moves back and forth and you're coming up against the power supply, okay? Uh, plus you have the uh, limit switches over here. So 
I'm not sure. I mean, I'd have to look on Thingiverse. If you can give me a link, I'll take a look at it. But I think if you're going to put any kind of oversized bed leveling knobs on there, you're going to collide with stuff, at least on this printer. So just, just a heads up because I, I agree with you. I like the bigger uh, knobs and able to uh, level the bed. But on this monster, uh, given all the stuff that's beneath it, um, I'm not sure that would work out. And I'm just scrolling through here. Let's see what was left. I'm just starting to think if I've missed anything along the way. Yeah, I definitely think we got a bad bearing. Okay, that's done. That's done. Boy, isn't this great? Almost all the wiring is done. Let me go ahead and show you here. See, look at this stuff. So we've got almost all this done. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> they, uh, right here, they have, uh, I kid you not, in the instructions, power cord goes straight to power supply, no switch. So... Yep, 2Z motors, so we already did that. The other thing is this one uses connectors, and I I mentioned during the build, if you've seen the videos, I kept on saying I would really prefer to solder uh, connectors. I'm, I'm not, I, I just, I don't know. If you add a connector, you're adding another point of failure. Uh, I really prefer the idea of soldering wires or you know using those, uh, they make these really cool crimp solder connections. Uh, you take the bare wires, you go through the clear tube, and in the middle there's a little ring of solder, and you put the heat gun on there, and it just shrinks all around it. That's That, to me, would be the way to do this. But not everyone has a heat gun, so. So we made it through this part here. We've got all this. The only thing I haven't done is we still have to connect in the uh, uh, these guys here. I'm just scrolling through the uh, instructions to see. So, okay, so there's our connection to the motor. We did limit switches. We did that. That's done. Yeah, and see, this is another spot here where, again, we're using all these connectors, and it's just so much easier to just to solder the wires. Um, but that's just my opinion. And the shrink tubing. Trying to shove all that stuff around. This has been done. This is all done. We redid this today. This we're not gonna do. <laughs> I don't like that. Yeah, so we're literally, we're literally on step 55. Yeah, and then the next part is running these connections here. Plugging the LCD ribbon keel to the LCD. Make sure you match XP1 and XP2 on each. Okay, that seems pretty basic. I can, I can do that. Um, you know, with the FT5, you can just stuff all the wires in the back and slam the door shut and hope for the best. This thing, I don't know how we're going to hide these wires. <laughs> uh, and then look at that. The last step is we're literally plugging it in and configuring it. We are so close, gentlemen. So close. How awesome is that? Okay. Oh, where'd this go? My other computer keeps on timing out on me. Let's check this out. Oh, this thing keeps pausing on me. Oh, good. You got links? Oh, really? Oh, the soldering would be really good. <laughs> oh, well, the teacher should should want you to solder. I mean, it, it's a better connection, but the connectors will work as well, too. Oh, let's see. I have friends that want me to play a flying game tonight, and they have jumped on my YouTube live stream to mock and intimidate me. Even though they're going to get their rear end shot down repeatedly. But hey. It's okay. 
So here's what I'm gonna do. Usually I try to have these videos go two hours or less. This one ran a little bit long because we found some issues and we repaired them and upgraded them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this up. I thank you guys for watching. If you're not subscribers to my channel already, please become subscribers. This way you don't miss any of my videos. Make sure you hit the notification so that when I do live streams like this during builds, you get notified that we're up and online and we're building. And if you wish to help me out, there's a tip jar, there's Patreon, there's a link on my homepage for YouTube. I'm sorry for the uh, link out to uh, PayPal. Oh, it's late guys, I'm trying to talk. <laughs> um, so anyway, thanks for tuning in. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get some of the parts I need and we're gonna resume the build again tomorrow. So thanks for watching. Remember, you can see other things. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I wanna tell you here. Oh, I want you to be aware that Where Nerdy Is Cool has a presence on Facebook, whereNerdyIsCool.com forward slash Where Nerdy Is Cool. Uh, also on Instagram. That's where I post a lot of pictures of things that are in progress and uh, in between the videos that I post. So if you want to stay in touch that way, you can do so. All right. I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great Saturday night. I have some friends mocking me. They want me to go fly DCS World with them. So I guess I'll oblige them. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching. See ya.